All right. Well, then I'm going to go ahead and get started. I want to thank you guys for, for taking time out of your busy schedule to be on today's webinar. Uh, it's a very exciting and interesting topic, your 2013 Internet Marketing Plan. Uh, I want you guys all to, you know, to acknowledge, I know that this is a QSC webinar. There are some members that, that are on and other people maybe that, that are visiting. Uh, QSC is a training organization that you should definitely be engaged in. Um, typically, when you get into the, into the new year, you start to think about what you accomplished the previous year and what you want to accomplish in the coming year. Uh, and you set your goals and you start to look at your plans. Uh, and this webinar really is going to be around your internet marketing plan, the specific things you should and could be doing to get the most bang for your buck in terms of visitors to your website, in terms of inbound calls, and in terms of, of new revenue. I want to start by saying the this is a webinar that's live. Um, you have the option and the opportunity to ask me questions. I want to keep this as interactive as possible. So as I get through sections on the webinar, I'll open it up for questions. So keep your scratch pad handy, type your questions, ask them. I will do my best to, to answer all of the questions. So I, I, I want you guys to think just for a minute and, and really ask yourself, you know, have you ever wondered what it would be like to dominate the search engines in your area for the plumbing and HVAC keywords in your area? Have you ever wondered what it would be like to have a flood of prospects calling into your business on a consistent basis that found you online, whether it was through the search engines or through social media? And have, have you ever wondered what it would be like to have a marketing strategy that worked so you didn't have to wonder, you didn't have to stay up at night you know, thinking, oh man, am I doing the right thing? Do I have the right plan? Have I implemented the right strategies? Well, that's exactly what I'm going to be covering on this webinar today. Um, so just, just you know, to keep this interactive, I'm going to ask questions and I want you guys to answer whether in your own mind or on a scratch pad because I find that when you hear something, you retain some portion of it. When you interact with it, you, you retain much more. So how many of you would like me to show you a proven process for dominating the Internet in your area? How many of you want me to show you a strategy to get more money in your business? And how many of you would like me to show you a way to get your phone ringing off the hook day after day with people that are in your area that are in need of your services? Well, I definitely want that for you, and that's what I'm going to be covering on today's webinar. So what you're going to discover throughout the course of this next 45 minutes to an hour is how you can get your plumbing business or HVAC business ranked on page one for the most important plumbing keywords in your area. And, and by that, I'm not just referring to plumber plumbing. There's a lot of different things in the plumbing and HVAC space, like tankless water heaters and drain cleaning and repiping. You want to make sure you got a plan that's going to help you rank for all of those different combinations. I'm going to show you a proven strategy for getting ranked on the Google map by establishing your name, address, and phone number profile, by proactively uh, managing your citations, by optimizing your Google Places listing, and more, mo maybe most importantly, establishing a consistent process where you're requesting reviews and getting reviews from your real customers in your real service area. You're also going to discover a proven step-by-step -step strategy for leveraging social media, Facebook and Twitter, Google Plus and LinkedIn, to get more repeat and referral business, which would be the lifeblood of your organization. And of course, how you can double your calls via the internet just by implementing these strategies I'm going to be sharing on today's webinar. How does that sound? I'll make you a promise, and that's by the end of this webinar, you're going to know why you're not at the top of page one for your city plus plumber or your city plus AC or your city plus HVAC. You're going to know why your competition is, and you're going to know the exact step-by-step -step things you would need to do in order to obtain that top position. Stick with me. You'll know the answers to these three questions by the end of this webinar. So before we go too deep, I want to stop and just kind of define what Internet marketing is. Uh, and, and to me, it's a process that generates a steady flow of profitable new customers via search engines, social media, and other online properties. So it's not just search engines, it's not just Facebook, it's not just social media, it's not just pay-per-click, it's really 
everything that's internet based that can drive new customers and new revenue opportunities for your business. So what internet marketing should you be doing in 2013? This is kind of what I consider to be your checklist, you know, the, the, the list that you should be working off and I'll make sure that this list in a checklist format is sent to you after the, the presentation if you want it. How many of you guys would like me to send this out to you along with some additional details? First you need to update your website for SEO and conversion. So you probably have a website, you probably you know, have it with, with some specific information. Going into 2013, there's some very specific things you want to do to make sure that it can rank for your most important plumbing and HVAC words and that it's written in a way that's compelling for your customers. So when somebody gets to your site, reads through it, it resonates with them and they want to call you as opposed to your competition. I feel like that's the first place you should start. Your website really is going to be the foundation for everything you do online. You want to make sure you have a mobile ready version of your website. So when somebody accesses your website from a mobile phone, whether it's an iPhone or an Android or an iPad, they're going to get a version that fits on their mobile device. Makes it easy for them to get the information that they need and can quickly contact you. More and more consumers are accessing the internet via their mobile devices. So you want to make sure you've got that taken care of. You've got to get active in search engine optimization. So we know pay-per-click is out there. We know search engine optimization is the process of getting ranked without paying on a per-click basis. That's what we call the organic listings and the, uh, the map listings. You want to make sure you're implementing proactive strategies to build inbound links, to have fresh content on your website so that you can start to rank for your most important keywords. And I'm going to be talking uh, in quite a bit of depth about that specific topics and the things you should be doing to correctly build the SEO behind your website. You also want to make sure that you're optimizing your site for the Google Maps. And you know the things you need to look at from that perspective are, have you claimed and optimized your Google Places listing? Are there any infractions that are penalizing your, your online directory listing on Google Places? Of course, you do that at Google Places. You need to develop your citation so there's consistent references, your company's name, address, and phone number. And you need to have a process in place to get more reviews. I'm going to be talking in depth about that specific topic. That's the number one question we get from plumbing and HVAC contractors on a daily basis is how in the world can I get myself to rank on the map when someone types in my city plus plumber, my city plus plumbing. There's some very specific things you can do. I'm going to be covering that on today's webinar. The next thing you want to do is you want to get active in social media. There's a lot of buzz around Facebook and Twitter and Google Plus and LinkedIn. Well, a lot of the plumbers haven't quite figured out how they can leverage social media in a way that's going to create more revenue and more opportunities for you. you got to get active in social media. I'm going to talk about the specific social profiles you should have set up and how you can start to post to them in a way that's going to help you engage with your customers and get more repeat referral business. I believe you should be leveraging email marketing. It costs virtually nothing to send an email out to your customers. So the first thing you need to do is start to collect the name and email address of your customers and have that residing somewhere so that you can send emails. And then you've got to just be consistent. Send an email out once a month, once a week, depending upon what frequency makes sense for you. And it, make it informational. Make it engaging. Don't just throw out special offers and promotions. But put information out that helps you remain top of mind with your active customers. That's a no-brainer. Everyone on this line should be starting to get involved in email marketing at some level. From there, I really feel once you've got the SEO, the maps, social media, all of that squared away, I really think you should start to consider launching some type of paid marketing component. So that could be AdWords pay-per-click, it could be Bing pay-per-click, it could be getting involved in some of the paid online directories like Angie's List, Yelp, City Search. they all have options where you can have paid premium placement. Uh, and then you need to make sure that you've got all of the tracking mechanisms in place so you can know how these things are working for you in terms of how, how is this impacting the traffic to the website, how is it impacting the number of calls, and most importantly, how is it impacting the bottom line in booked service. And Greg, I see a question from you, so I'm going to take a pause here and, and address this. When you say plumber plus city, um, does that include the plus sign or just Plumber Denver? That's a good question. So I, I just say that because that's the way my mind thinks. 
But yeah, really what I'm talking about is you're in Denver, so, so when someone types in Denver plumber or plumber Denver, that's really what I'm referring to, not necessarily with the, with the plus sign. I hope that answers your, your question. So the, this, what I've just described, is really where I think you need to be active in, in your internet marketing program. I mean, this is really the blueprint that you should be working from. You need to be firing on each one of these different activities to get the most from your internet marketing, um, internet marketing presence in 2013. So why, why is the internet important? Why are we even having a conversation about the internet? I know I don't need to spend a ton of time on this because you're on the webinar because you know the internet's important, you're trying to learn, but there's been a massive transition from offline to online. It used to be you could have a large yellow page ad and that's where most people would look when they needed plumbing or HVAC related services. They'd take out the yellow pages, they'd go to the plumbing section and they'd see your ad and if you had a large ad, you had a high probability of connecting with people right when they were in need of your services. Well that has changed a little bit. There's been a transition. People aren't going to the yellow pages at the same velocity that they once did. They are still going to the yellow pages. I don't advocate canceling all of your yellow page ads. I still think that there's um, opportunity there for you because it's a good demographic, but when we're talking about where the real opportunity is, they have started looking online. Statistics tell us that more than 77 percent of consumers are going to the internet when they need plumbing services. They're going to Google, they're going to Yahoo, they're going to Bing, and they're, you know, they're searching from their mobile phones, and they're just typing in plumber, plumbing, Denver plumber, for instance, and there's a major opportunity for you in showing up when they're looking for you online. Um, we know, based on historical search trends, we have access to Google's information. We can see there's over 20 million searches every single month for plumbing and HVAC-related services. So if you just take that out, you take that number and you divide it by the number of cities in the United States, that's thousands and thousands of people every single month actually looking for these services. So that's why the Internet's critical. You need to be uh, showing up as these people are looking for what you do. And Teresa, I see your question. There are different schools of thought of how you should title each page on your site. Are there any rules of thumb on how to title? Actually, there are. I'm going to be talking about that in the SEO section. So definitely I'll address that. When we, when we get there and feel free to ask another question if you need more clarification. So the opportunities now and you know you really want to be taking action on this right away. 2013 is here, we're already halfway through January so you want to make sure you hit the ground running with, with these ideas and these strategies. Um, the effectiveness of your traditional marketing is diminishing so if you don't have, if you're not being proactive on the internet your, your dollars aren't getting the same return on investment as they potentially could. Um, your competitors are already really active on the internet. Your competitors are setting up websites, they're doing review acquisition, they're doing link building, their content, they're leveraging say, social media. So every minute, every month, every week that passes, they're getting a little bit further ahead of you. So you want to take action on this right away. So who am I and why should you listen to me? Well, I'm the author of The Complete Guide to Internet Marketing for Plumbing Contractors. It sells on Amazon.com. Uh, I'm an associate member of PHCC, QSC, and ACCA. I've spoken at a number of the PHCC, QSC, and other events throughout the United States and on a local level um, about internet marketing, search engine optimization, social media. Uh, I'm widely accepted as an expert in internet marketing for plumbing and HVAC businesses. My articles on internet marketing have been published in magazines like Plumbing and Mechanical and Contractor Magazine and HVAC Insider. But I think even more importantly, I personally have had the opportunity to work with some of the most profitable plumbing businesses and HVAC businesses throughout the United States and helped many of them go from where they had no placement online to the point where they now dominate in, this, in their markets for the most important plumbing and HVAC related keywords. And I'm really going to be sharing the ideas, strategies, and techniques that we use within our company to help them get those types of results. So just to show you some examples of how this plays out, uh, and just to give you some confidence that what I'm talking about is not theory, I didn't read a book, I'm not just sharing these ideas out of my mind, these are actually based on real world experience with other plumbing and HVAC businesses just like yours. Um, so this is a customer that we work with in the Fort Lauderdale area, you can see he's in spot A on the map. 
Um, you know, this is a customer in the Brooklyn market, spot B on the map. Uh, this is the keyword Sarasota plumber, spot A on the map. Uh, this is Toronto plumber, position one. And I really do not show those examples to brag. I, I just really want to impress upon you that the same exact strategies that went into getting those types of placements are what I'm going to be sharing on this webinar. So if you haven't already, I would encourage you to take out a pen and pad, close the door, you know, really focus in on this because I'm going to be giving you some great information that you can implement almost immediately within your business. Mm -hmm. So just a quick you know, over, you know, overview of who I am, you know, what my story is, how I became um, you know, an expert in internet marketing for, for plumbing and HVAC businesses. Uh, you know, I, I started an internet marketing or web development company right out of high school and had some success with that. Um, but it wasn't until I really connected with a plumbing business in the South Florida area and was able to implement not web design but internet marketing strategies and techniques that my business really was was focused in the way that uh, added so much value to the to the community as a whole. Uh, so I had the opportunity to work with this company in, in Fort Lauderdale. The, the client was uh, Wes Alcon. Uh, I was able to set up his website, get him optimized on Google Maps, put a real proactive internet marketing strategy in place, and he quickly moved from getting virtually no business online to the point where he dominated for the plumbing related keywords there in the Fort Lauderdale market and grew his business from two guys to four guys to eight guys and it was such a dramatic success that he started referring me to his to his friends and colleagues not not in his direct competitive area and I wound up getting another plumber in in the Miami area and I implemented some of those same strategies and techniques kind of honed and improved my process and he had similar results where his business just grew and he grew a, a major service division in his company that he, he hadn't prior to that had um, and so with that success. I said, hey, you know what? I like this plumbing and HVAC space. I know that I can help these businesses increase their sales and grow their revenues. And I decided I was going to make the very best internet marketing search engine optimization service for the plumbing and HVAC world. And, you know, that's how we, we got to be where we are. And I, I've got some pictures up there of me speaking and, uh, and my team that we have here. It's a group of seven of us here in our Miami office. So what I'm finding is Plumbing and HVAC companies are facing similar challenges. They're not getting enough calls from quality customers. They don't really have quality systems in place to capture leads from people that are looking for their services. It seems like you guys are spending a lot of time and money on marketing that's not working. Uh, you know, a lot of you guys have tried just about every trick, tactic, and company out there, and unfortunately, not gotten a great result. You know, there's a lot of misinformation. There's a lot of companies that, that are selling to build goods and it can be real frustrating. And so for me, you know, I really truly have a passion for helping plumbing and HVAC businesses not just do better online, but really grow more profitable businesses and accomplishing their, their long-term goals. So let's get into six steps to online success in 2013 and the specific things I think you need to do I already laid out the blueprint and I'll be sending you that checklist but these are the action items these are the things I feel like you should be taking action on immediately so number one you need to understand the search engines on the search engines there's three areas there's the paid listings the organic listings and the map listings you have to understand those three different components of the search engines and you have to know that you need a separate strategy for each of the three sections to be as profitable as possible. From there, you really need to build out your website for your most profitable related services. And I'm going to talk about each of these in more depth. You have to optimize your website for search so that Google understands what your pages on your site are all about. Then you've got to build inbound links and authority. You've got to optimize for the maps and you've got to get active in social media. So as I talk about the three different sections on the search engines, there are the paid listings, the organic listings, and the map listings. And you should see an image up on your screen. The area along the top and along the side are what are called paid listings. There you can go to google.com slash AdWords, set up an AdWords campaign, pick the keywords that you'd like to rank for in that section, plumber, plumbing, plumbing contractor, emergency plumber, etc. And you'll be able to show up in that area and you only pay on a per click basis. So you're only paying when somebody clicks on your ad. That's the only paid section of the search engines. The area below that is typically going to be either the organic section or the map listings. 
and it changes depending upon market and depending upon what mood Google's in that day. So the organic listings, you can't pay for. You could, there's no one you can call at Google and offer $10,000 to take the number one spot. It's really driven by your website, the content on your website, the number of links, and really what Google perceives to be the most relevant page for any given search term. So if you want to rank for your city plumber or your city plumbing, you have to have a page that's optimized for that with links back to it, creating the authority in order to rank in that section. I'm going to talk about how to do that. And then the area below that is the map listings. There you're going to see a map. You're going to see A, B, C, D, E, F. Again, you cannot pay. There's no paid program through Google where you can say, hey, Google, I want to buy that listing. That's driven by your Google Places listing or your Google Plus local listing now and the number of citations you have and the number of online reviews that you have. So I'm going to be talking about those two sections in depth throughout the course of this presentation, but I really want you to understand and own that those are different sections. They, they all have a different strategy involved, so you need to make sure you understand all three and you put, a, you put an aggressive strategy in place for each of those sections. So typically when we get to this place, the, you know, the questions I get are, okay, so if, if I can pay in the pay-per-click section, should I just run pay-per-click ads? Or I don't, if I don't want to pay, should I focus all my energy on just getting ranked in the organic listings? And my thought process is you want to show up as often as possible when people are looking for what you do. So you want to have a strategy to show up in the paid listings and the organic listings and the map listings. But if you're working from a limited budget and you really just want to know where you can invest your time and your energy to get the best return on investment and get the most, uh, the best bang for your buck, I would say place the SEO organic listings in priority over the paid listings and the pay-per-click strategy. And the reason for that is statistically when people run a search, their eyes go straight to the organic listings, the non-paid listings. And if I was at a live session right now, I'd ask you to raise your hand and say, hey, when you search, are you typically clicking the paid listings or are you going to the organic listings? And just about everybody in the room raises their hand and says, yeah, I go straight to the organic non-paid listings. Even the ones that don't realize that the, the top and the side are paid. So with that said, you should probably be focusing your energy on where most people's eyes goes and where they're looking and where they're clicking, which is the organic listings. So, with that said, you need to build out your website so that you can rank on the organic listings in the search engines for the keywords people are typing when they need your services. And, you know, when I look at a typical plumbing and HVAC website, I'm seeing, you know, three to five pages. Home, about us, our services, coupons, contact us. I know some of you have gone further than that and you're doing more than that and that's great, but... I really feel like in order to maximize your opportunity online, I know each page on your website can only be optimized for between one and two keyword combinations. So if you want to rank for drain cleaning and plumbing and emergency plumbing and all of the different things that you do, you need to have pages for each one of your service built on your website. And then I also know that you typically service between a 35 and 50 mile radius. So you have a major city, and, and Greg on the call said, oh, I'm in Denver. Um, so for him, he, you know, he wants to rank for Denver, but he also services a 35-mile radius. So he, he services probably, uh, I don't know, Boulder and Englewood. Uh, and so there's a lot of little cities in that 35-mile radius. So in order to rank for each one of those sub-cities, because not everyone's going to type Denver, they might type in Boulder, or they might type in one of those other smaller cities, you want to have a page on your site for each one of the cities that you service. So I'm going to talk about how to do that and how this plays out, but I'm just kind of laying the foundation for where, where we're going here. So you want to start by thinking about what keywords people are typing in when they need your plumbing and HVAC related services. Um, and I have pulled up a list, I'll be sending this off after the presentation, of the most commonly searched plumbing related keywords which are plumber, plumbing, plumbers, water heaters, bathroom remodeling, tankless water heaters, leak detection, drain cleaning, and the list goes on and on. And so knowing that people are typing these keywords leads you to, okay, so what pages do I need to have on my website? Because every page can only be ranked for between one and two keyword combinations. What keywords do I need to have 
what pages do I need to have to rank for these keywords? So again, typical website, home about us, our services, contact us. That's what I've got at the top of the screen here. How we recommend you build this out is definitely keep the home about us coupons and contact us as core pages on your site. But when it gets to your services section, when you start to talk about the different services that you offer, there you want to go deeper. You want to have a page for the emergency plumbing and you want to have a page for leak detection and you want to have a page for toilet repair. So I'm talking about having a specific web page on your domain for those specific services. And then you want to build out service area pages as well. So, you know, 35 mile radius, you probably have at least 10 sub cities that you operate within. Have a service area and then have sub city one plumber, sub city two plumber, sub city three plumber. That way you've got a page for each one of the different keywords that you want to be ranking for. And so this is just a visual representation of what that could look like for you. So you don't necessarily have to have a crazy site, but it can have drop-down menus. So when someone goes over the service section, there would be a drop-down with which links out to the various services that you offer. And then when they go over the service area section, there could be a drop-down for each one of those cities that you operate with. And if you really want to get creative, you can actually take your sub-cities, combine them with your core services, and have pages for each one of your services combined with each one of your sub-cities. Um, this gets tricky. You know, you can get as, as elaborate as you like. The key is, as you build out sub-city pages, you have to keep the content unique. So your Denver page has to be a little bit different than your Boulder page, which has to be a little bit different than your Inglewood page. Otherwise, you're going to run into duplicate content issues where Google's saying, hey, wait a minute, you're trying to play a game with the system. So if you're going to do this, you need to do it right. You have to invest the time and the energy to make those pages at least unique in some regard. Um, and so doing this stuff really is just giving us indexation for these different keywords. So having these pages will give you a spot on the search engine for your city water heaters and your city um, sh shower installation. doesn't necessarily mean that you're ranking for them. So the next step really is we need to optimize them in a, in a way that Google understands what those pages are optimized for. And then... What really is going to determine your, your ranking is the amount of inbound links to the website. And in a few minutes, you're going to discover how to get those links. I'm going to be covering that. Um, but any questions on this build-out process before I continue? Good. That means I must have described it pretty well. As you guys have questions, this is a live webinar. Please feel free to send your questions through, and I will do my best to answer them. So just to give you a feel for how this plays out in the real world, um, one of the clients I, I work with is in the Tampa, Florida area, and Philip Marisi Plumbing, you know, he'd been in the plumbing business for you know, probably 20 plus years. Uh, he was a big time Yellow Page advertiser, actually did some TV and radio, uh, found that he grew his business on the Yellow Pages, found that it wasn't generating the same level of calls, and recognized kind of early on that he needed to get involved in the internet. So he set up a website, and he paid a couple different firms to try and do some SEO for him. Uh, but just wasn't ranking for the keywords that he wanted to rank for. Didn't have the right pages on his website for all of the different combinations people were typing in. Uh, so we implemented this process on his behalf. We built out the website. We did some of the, the ongoing optimization stuff I'm going to be explaining. And he went from 15 calls a month when he started, because we have call tracking, and it's one of the things I highly recommend is to track the calls that are coming in from your online presence. He went from 15 calls to 147 calls per month over a, about a six-month period. Um, now he averages over 120 calls pretty much every month directly via the Internet. Um, and he says, prior to working with Plumber SEO, we're only getting a few calls via the Internet. In September of this year, we tracked 147 calls directly via the web. And I share these stories because I find that, um, you know, your mind is going to remember the story more than it's going to remember the technical aspects. So I share these stories so that you can really see, okay, why do I want to build all these pages? What's the purpose? Because when you show up for more of these keywords, it's going to drive more inbound calls to your business. So we talked about having the pages on your website. Oh, hold on. So I've got a question here from George Shotwell. George, thanks for joining me. Thanks for your question. What's the average cost to build each page? Um, that's, that's a tough question to answer. 
you know, could could be just labor cost, right? If you've got somebody on your staff that understands the internet or has a web format that they can build out, um, could be, you know, could be just labor cost. You pay a web development company, some of them charge a couple hundred bucks for every page. Uh, we have a program where we actually do all of this on a bundled fee, uh, but that's something we can discuss at a later time. But thank you very much for the question. Uh, we can talk afterwards if you want to know about you know, pricing for specific things. So we talked about building out the, the site. So we've got pages for each one of the services that we want to rank for. Now we need to optimize those pages. We need to make sure that when Google comes across the page, it understands what's it about and can put you in the search results for that specific keyword. So on each page of your website, there's some very specific things you want to do. You want to have a unique title tag with your keywords. and I'm going to explain what that is. I'm going to show you visually what it is. You have to have the H1 or the H1 tag restate what your keyword is. And remember, so your home page is for plumber, plumbing, or HVAC air conditioning, but then your water heater page is for your city plus water heater installation, water heater repair, etc. So you want to make sure that you've got your keywords in the title tag, the H1 tag, the image, so the name of the image, the alt tag attribution for the image, you can have your keywords in the URL to really make it easy for Google to understand what your page is about and add you to the index for the right keywords. So this is what I mean when I say you want to update your title tag. So the title tag, you can see you know, on the image that that arrow is pointing to the very top portion of the browser. And if you go to your website after this webinar and you look, you'll be able to see what your title tags are for your home page and your About Us page and your services page. Um, but what I typically see is that title tag reads something like Joe the Plumber or Joe's Plumbing or whatever the name of the company is. And intuitively that makes sense because that's your company name, but people aren't necessarily going to type in your company name when they need your services. They're going to type in your city plus plumber or your city plumbing your city air conditioning. So this title tag is one of the clearest indicators to Google or the search engines what the specific page on your website is all about. So you want to add your keywords as far to the left as possible for the keywords that you want to rank for. So if you're Joe's Plumbing Company and you happen to be in Orlando, then you probably want to put Orlando Plumber, then your company name, Joe's Plumbing in Orlando, Florida. Or, and some other variation. You can use 64 characters in the title tag on your home page and each of the pages of your site. So you can be creative, but you want to use your main keywords at the far left. You definitely still want to keep your company name in the title tag on your home page specifically for Google Maps optimization purposes. So Greg's got a question on title tags. How often can you change your title tag? Does changing the title tag frequently affect Google? And this is, you know, this is something that's it's a matter of uh, opinion, a matter of debate. I really feel like the title tags on your pages should remain pretty constant as long as you're ranking for the keywords you want to rank for. So if the keyword is Orlando Plumber or Denver Plumber and Denver Plumbing, and you've got that strategically positioned in your title tag on your site, you don't want to change that too often. You don't want to change it on the subpages. What you do want to change is the text on the page so you can keep the site active. And you definitely want to be adding blog content to a blog portion of your site where you're adding new pages, you're adding fresh content, so the page is vibrant, it's constantly being updated, but I don't necessarily recommend going in and always changing your, your title tags. I hope that answers your question, Greg. Feel free to write a follow-up question to that if you, if you have one. So, again, you don't want to just do the title tag like this on your home page. You want to update the title tag on each of the subsequent pages of your site. So I've added along the right side here of the image that's on the screen some examples. So we talked about having an emergency plumbing page. So you want to have Orlando Emergency Plumbing, 24-hour emergency plumbing service in Orlando. That might be a good title for your emergency page. Your water heater page, you might want to have Orlando Water Heating Repair, Water Heater Repair Service in Orlando, and then, you know, Drain Cleaning, Orlando Drain Cleaning, Drain Cleaning Service in Orlando, Florida, etc. So you get the idea. What I really want you to understand is that you want to update the title tag so they've got your city modifier on your pages. And so Ed Dorsey, uh, I'm sorry, Ed, I pronounced your last name wrong. Ed's got a question for us. How often should you blog on your website? 
And I'm going to talk about this in a little bit. Content is king. You need to be adding content on a pretty consistent basis. I say you want to be doing at least one per week, um, at a minimum once per month. And you know your blog content should be informational in nature. It doesn't have to be you know how to pick the best plumbing company in Denver. It should be you know, the differences between the tanked and tankless water heater. Information that somebody would read and say, hey, isn't that interesting? I'm glad I came across this and would want to share online. So I hope that answers your question, Ed. So probably at least once a month, I recommend once a week. So the second step in the on-page optimization process, we talked about the title tag. The next one is your H1 tag. And I've got an image up on the screen, and it's pointing to your H1 tag. You can go into the code and add H1s, or you can, in WordPress, there's a very easy way to do it in most customer uh, content management systems like Joomla and WordPress. You just set, this text is my H1 tag. If you have a web developer, title tags, H1 tags, these things they should understand and be able to do relatively easy for you. So the same thing as the title tags, you want to figure out what the keyword was that you're trying to optimize for and implement that in your H1 tag on each page in your site. So the home page is city plus plumber, the next, you know, the drain cleaning page, city plus drain cleaning, and try and make it read right. So don't just throw your keyword there. You know, you could use your Orlando plumbing company or the best drain cleaning service in Orlando. You know, be creative and make sure that it, it reads right. So that's your title tag, I mean your H1 tag. The other thing you can do is add some type of geo map on your website. And there are various tools that will do this. Uh, we use a tool called Nearby Now where the technicians can check in and the GPS data from that check-in would syndicate to your homepage and to the subsidy pages on your site. Doing something like this helps Google see what your true service area is, makes the content on the page unique, so you're not just posting the same thing again and again on each of your subsidy pages, and it's fresh content. So definitely that's, that's kind of a, a ninja technique that I wanted to share. Have a, have a heat map of some sort on your website. So, just as an example of how this works, and I'll get to that in one second, Greg, I see you got a question. Um, again, once you've optimized these subsidy pages, you can rank for more than just your City Plus Plumber, your City Plus Plumbing. Um, you know, Tom Watson is a company that I worked with in, or I work with currently, actually, in Miami, and you know, he says, hey, now I have prominent placement for the keywords that are most important to me. Miami Commercial Plumber, Miami Commercial Plumbing Contractor, Miami plumber, plumber in Miami, Miami tankless water heater, Miami water heater installation, and many others. So again, these strategies work. When you do it, you build off the pages, you optimize them in a way that Google understands, you'll start to rank for a vast array of keywords. So Greg, you have a question, so I'm going to jump on this. Does the geo map help with Google Maps? As a matter of fact, it does. Um, it helps Google understand what your true service area is. Um, again, the more geo-modified context you can have on your site for the various pages on your site, the more Google says, okay, this is a real plumbing company in this market that does these services. So, yes, it, it does. Which brings us actually to the next topic. And feel free to, again, guys, you know, I, I want to talk about getting you ranked on the Google Maps, but if you have questions... Feel free to send them through. So the next thing, now that you've built out your website and you've optimized the pages so that they can really be clear for Google to understand what they should be ranked for, you need to have a proactive strategy for getting ranked on the Google map. And this is one of the most frequently asked questions that I get from plumbing and HVAC contractors throughout the United States is, how do I get ranked on the Google map when someone types in, you know, my city plus plumber, my city plumbing? And there are three core components that play a major role in getting ranked on the map. The first is you need to have a verified and optimized Google Maps listing. And that, I'm going to explain how to do it. It's actually relatively simple. It's very easy and it's and it doesn't cost you anything. So that's the first thing. You need to properly claim and optimize your Google Places listing. Most of you have heard this, so this isn't new information. You guys have seen, okay, I understand, I need to claim my map listing. I've done it, but I'm still not ranking, so what gives? 
And the reason is there are two even more important components to getting ranked. That's just like setting up the pages on your website. Okay, great, you've got a placeholder. Doesn't mean that you're ranking. So what do you need to do to rank on the map? Well, the other two critical components that drive ranking are consistency of your NAP, your name, address, phone number across the web, and the number of online reviews that you have. So consistency of your name, address, phone number is making sure that you're referenced the same way, not just on Google Maps, but on Angie's List and City Search and Bing Local and Yahoo Local. And I'm going to share with you some of the most important online directories you should be in. So it's kind of it's kind of a double importance. First, you need to make sure you're in those listings. You know, you got to make sure you're referenced across the web in a lot of different places. But secondly, and just as important as it needs to be consistent, there shouldn't be a lot of discrepancies as to what your company name and what your company phone number are. And that's one of the challenges I'm finding with bigger, more established plumbing companies that have tried a few companies and failed is that they don't have consistency of the NAP. And then, of course, having reviews from your real customers in your real service area is, is critical. And so you have to have a strategy in place for getting those reviews online. So I've got a couple questions here I need to address. How do I get the geographical area without a physical address in the area? That, that is a very tough question. Um, I'll address that a little bit in a minute, but it's going to be hard for you if you don't have a real location in the city that you want to rank for. Um, you know, it all comes down to having consistency of the name, address, and phone number and having that referenced consistently across the web. And if you don't have a legitimate location or if you just have a UPS store, that's not going to get you very far. But I'll, I'll give you some ideas a little bit later on this presentation. Tim, thanks for joining us on the call. I'm glad to have you here. Um, do the reviews from nearby now have more value than the Google Places reviews? I would say, and, and Tim's talking specifically about a tool that we use called Nearby Now, which people can write reviews directly in the Nearby Now system. I would say you want to have your reviews scattered across the web. So you want to have some reviews that are on Google Maps. Definitely want to have at least 5 to 10. Um, you want to have reviews that are Angie's List. You want to have reviews that are on City Search. You want to have reviews that are on all of these online directory sites. Um, really where Nearby Now reviews come into play, they've already got the H card format, so when they get posted to your site, those reviews are getting picked up in a way Google can understand. In a lot of cases, you'll get stars, even the organic listings um, of the search engines. But the real benefit is it's the easiest way for someone to write a review if they don't have any online profiles, if they don't have a Google account, or they don't have a Yelp account. It's just a place where they can enter a review and have that picked up. So, Tim, I hope that answers your question, but you want to make sure we're getting reviews across the spectrum. So Michelle has a question. We've moved. How do we clear out the old address information out on the web? <sighs> Michelle, that's that's one of those moving targets where you know moving your address definitely can be done. It just creates some additional work. Um, there are some tools that can help to make that an easier process. There are things like universal business listing. There's things like Yext. I don't necessarily recommend those two tools but they can make that process a little bit easier for making the update where you update it one place and apparently they push it out to the online directories. The best way and the right way to do it is to go into these directory listings. Go into Angie's List and log in and go into Best of the Web and go into Hot Frog manually with your username and password in tow and update that information. That's really the best way to do it. That way you know it gets done, you know it gets done correct, and you can have that clean nap. So I hope that answers your question, Michelle. And I'm, I'm already up at 3.45. I've got a lot of additional content to cover. So I'm going to try and answer these questions, but if I can't answer them all, um, you can definitely get together with me at the end of the presentation, and I'll stay on the line to answer these other questions. Um, my map listing isn't showing up. This is Lauren. My map listing isn't showing up. When I log into my account, it says verification is pending. I've tried to contact Google, and they're telling me that my review is in queue. Um, I have some ideas for you. Lauren, this is probably something we want to talk about after because it's different on a case-by-case -case basis. Phyllis, on Google Plus listing disappeared eight months ago. I've been trying to get us back online, continue to write. Google and they say they're working on it. It's frustrating, although um, any thoughts on this? Uh, Phyllis, that, that is a frustrating situation. It happens. 
Uh, typically, it happens because either there were duplicate listings or there was something that Google didn't like. Um, again, get with me after the call, and I'll give you some specific places you can go to get a live person at Google to, to help you with that process. So I'm going to keep going because I'm running short on time. So, again, the fundamentals are to claim your Google Maps listing. The, the next thing is to have consistency of your name, address, and phone number. The next is to have online reviews. So just some best practices. If you haven't done the first step, which is to claim and verify and optimize your Google Maps listing, you do that by going to google.com slash places. So if you haven't done that, if you don't know what I'm talking about, this should be your A1 first priority thing to address right away. Write it down, google.com slash places. You can go there. You'll see the image that I have up on the screen. You click on the business owner on the right. It'll ask you to enter your phone number. It'll search the web to find out where you are if you're in the index. And then you can claim your map listing. Uh, and then you can follow some of the best practices I'm about to share. If you have another company that did this for you and they claimed your map listing, um, you definitely want to get with them and get the username and password for the Google account that was used to claim it. Because I think that's something you want to have control of whether you have a service doing it for you or not. So you can go in and make sure that at least these best practices uh, are being met. So some best practices. You have to make sure that your name field in the Google Places listing is your company name. So Google has a very strong policy about this. There was a time where people were entering their company name plus keywords like Denver Plumber dash my company name. Um, you don't want to do that. Google will penalize that. You may have already been brought off the maps for that specific situation. So go in, make sure that it just reads your legal company name. Obviously, you want to have a web address. Phone numbers. You want to use a local area code number. Uh, 800 numbers do not bode well on the Google Maps. Google is trying to place local businesses and show local businesses. So an 800 number kind of dictates that you're a larger company and you may not be all of that local. In addition, most people prefer to dial a local number. They want to feel like they're dealing with a local business. So if you've got an 800 number in there, change it back to a local number. You want to use your local address, and this goes back to a question we had a little bit earlier ago. What do I do if I'm not in the location? Well, that you know is a challenge. Very rarely are we seeing businesses rank on the map if they're not in that city. So if you're in a sub-city outside the main city, you, you might want to rent an office in the main city. I know that sounds like a big investment. It sounds like a frustrating undertaking. If you want to rank on the map, you do need to be in the city. Um, you know, and don't try and shortcut this. Don't get a P.O. box or a UPS store. That used to work. It doesn't work anymore. Um, it's not really a proact. It's not. A, it's not a good strategy. Uh, worst case scenario, you can get a virtual office of some sort. But virtual office being they'll rent you a cubicle with an address and a unique suite number. You can do that. Um, make sure it's a unique suite number though. A lot of times now they're they're giving you a suite number, but it's shared by 20 other businesses which is not going to work for, for these purposes. So the next thing after you've optimized the listing correctly is you have to have consistency of your name, address, and phone number. And so that means figuring out what your actual company name is. And so if it's Joe's Plumbing and that's what you're going to use, make sure that that's what you use consistently. You don't use Joe's Plumbing and Heating or Joe's, Heat, Joe's Plumbing uh, Heating and Air Conditioning. Figure out what it is and make sure that, that it's referenced that same way on all of the online directory listings. Um, additionally, same thing with your phone number. A lot of people have implemented call tracking, and I'm a big fan of call tracking when it's done correctly. But if you use a different tracking number on your Google Places listing and a different one on your Angie's List listing and a different one on your uh, Bing Local listing, you're creating confusion uh, with Google as, to for, as far as what your name, address, phone number is. Uh, Basically, your name, address, and phone number is like your thumbprint across the web. And if you have inconsistency with that, it's going to hurt your probability of ranking on the map. So there should be a process where you sit down, you kind of look at what's listed out there, you figure out what's already the consistently referenced name, address, and phone number, make sure that it matches up with reality, and then spend the time to go into these directories and clean them up and make sure that there's consistency out there with that information. 
From there, we find that having real reviews from your real customers in your true service area is critical for, for getting ranked. Um, and it's not necessarily just about quality reviews. You don't need just five-star reviews. Um, we find that you know, even the companies that have low review ratings but have a large quantity of reviews tend to get a, an advantage. I'm not saying you want bad reviews, that's going to hurt your conversion, but be more concerned about getting authentic reviews from real customers than anything else. And so how do you get reviews from your real customers in your real service area? Well, first thing you can do is print out a simple request for review card. So have a, a little postcard sized document printed up that says, thanks for your business, we appreciate the opportunity to serve you. If you'd be so kind, write us a review. And then send them back on that page to some place where they'll have access to your online directory so through a click. So that could be, you know, yourcompany.com slash reviews. And then on that page, you've got a link to Angie's List and Google Maps and, you know, uh, Yelp.com with a direct link to your listing. So all they have to do is click that link and they're on the page where they can write the review for you. The second thing you want to do is have a consistent process where you're requesting reviews. So the easiest way to do it is to start to ask for the name and email address of your customers and then have some process set up, whether it's, uh, you know, someone in your team keying in an email after every single call or using a, an email responder, an autoresponder of some sort where the email can just be queued up. Uh, but you want to have a process where after the call, the customer gets a thank you email asking them to write and then asking them to write you a review. Doing that on a consistent basis and having a, you know, a thank you slash request for review process in place really improves the probability of getting reviews, which really improves the probability of ranking better on the map. So everything I talked about just then was really the process of optimizing your Google Maps listing, and it covers a lot more than just, um, you know, claiming your Google Map listing. There's a lot that goes into establishing your name, address, and phone number and, and getting real reviews from your real customers. And so just an example, again, of how this plays out in the real world, a uh, company we work with in Brooklyn, New York, uh, prior to working with us, they were spending uh, a lot of money on pay-per-click and on other programs that weren't generating a very strong return on investment. Um, they tried a lot of different things, didn't get ranked where they wanted to rank. We came in, we cleaned up the name, address, and phone number profile. We put a review request process in place, and, you know, here they say, we now have page one spot a position on the Google on Google for our most important keyword Brooklyn plumber and get traffic and phone calls from customers who found us typing in a variety of different keywords working with plumber SEO is the best decision that I've made and that was Mike and Jeannie Petrie from Petrie plumbing in in Brooklyn so now we got to think about building the authority for the domain so how do we get the other pages on the site so the map is really your home page that you can rank how do we get those other pages, the water heater page, the drain cleaning page, the emergency plumbing page, to rank? Well, we built the site. We optimized it with the title tags, the H1 tags, the unique content on each page. But the thing that's going to determine whether those pages rank on page 15 versus page 5 versus page 1 is the amount of links pointing back to those pages. So really, I say that 30% of the battle is having the page optimized correctly like we talked about before. You have to do it. That's the only way you're going to get into the index for the right words. But it's the links from other websites pointing back to these subpages that drive the authority that makes Google position it on page one versus page five. So he ha who has the most quality inbound links wins. And there's been some major changes in the last nine months on how Google classifies, classifies links. Um, there were some recent updates called Penguin and Panda, which I'm not going to go into a ton of detail here. But it's important to note that just getting links that are irrelevant, that have nothing to do with your plumbing business or nothing to do with your service area, isn't going to help you. It actually could potentially hurt you. So how can you get inbound links and build the authority for your domain? Well, there's a number of low-hanging fruit type opportunities that you can look at. And I'm just going to show this visual because I think it's easier to, to see a visual and really understand how this can play in. The low-hanging fruit, obviously, is your online directory listings. So as part of your Google Maps optimization process, you will want to go into 
Angie's List and City Search and Yelp.com and make sure that you're in there. They all have the opportunity for you to add a link. So that's a good starting point. Make sure you've got your directories and you've got links from those. The next thing you want to look at is associations that you're involved in. So if you're a member of the PHCC, QSC, Nexttar, all of these other online organizations, well, they typically have websites where they list their members. Getting a link from their member section back to your website drives a good quality inbound links. You can look at other non-competitive industry friends and foes. So if you're in the HVAC business and you've got somebody right in your area that's in the plumbing business that has a really good website, well, there's no reason you couldn't have them link to you and you link to them. That's a logical link that there's nothing foul about that. Um, you can also get links from other plumbing and HVAC companies that are non-competitive to you. You can look at your suppliers. So looking at, you know, if you buy from Moan, American Standard, Ream, Rudd, Train, most of them will add a link to you from their website. Maybe not on the main site, but they have, um, you know, they have dealer sections on the site where you can, in some cases, get listed. You can also look at your social media sites. So Facebook and Twitter and Google Plus and LinkedIn. I'm going to be talking about that here in a few minutes. But each one of those listings has the opportunity for you to put in your company's name, address, phone number, and a link back to your website. Those can drive quality links. And as you're posting fresh content to your social media profiles on an ongoing basis, those posts can be linked back to your site. So that creates links and social signals. You can look at any networking organizations that you're in, the Chamber of Commerce, BNI. These types of groups typically have sites. You can get links from those. You can go to your suppliers, your supply house. They might be willing to link to you from their site. Uh, but really, the best place to get links is by creating fresh content um, and pushing that content to your blog and then to other article directory sites. So just an example of that would be you know, creating information that's relevant to uh, to your industry. So if you're a plumber, you know the differences between P -P 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 PCV and copper piping. Why you would want to consider trenchless sewer replacement. Um, why you would buy a tanked water heater or a tankless water heater versus a tanked water heater. This is information that's value add to the greater uh, to the greater community. You can post that on your website, which makes your website more relevant. Um, somebody asked this question earlier: How often should I post? I recommend once a week. You could do more, you could do less, but I think once a week is a good benchmark. But then you can use that content to create links back to your site because you can take that simple article and share it through either a press release or you could post it on This Old House or eHow or other places that take this type of information and then they would in turn place the link back to not just your homepage but to some of the subpages too. So if you wrote an article on Tankless, well, why not have a link to your city tankless water heaters? So by doing that on a consistent basis is how you create the inbound links, which helps you outrank your, your competition. Um, you know, a really good ninja strategy is what we call competitive link acquisition. Competitive link acquisition is the process of looking at your main competitors that are ranked in the top position for your most important keywords, Using tools like Majestic SEO or SEO Book, um, there's a number of tools that do this, and you can type in their URL and get a list of the different websites that are linking back to them. And if what I'm saying is correct, we know that the person that's in the top position for your city plumber, your city plus HVAC, is there because they have an optimized website with more inbound links and more authority than by looking at their link profile, you can figure out what you would need to do to rank better than them. And that's the process of looking at their links, getting those same or similar links pointed back to your website, and moving yourself up in the results. So just another example of this, you know, a company we work with in the Las Vegas market, um, you know, he was trying a lot of different things, a lot of pay-per-click programs, uh, not ranking very well. Uh, after working with us and implementing this strategy and really getting the ranking squared away, he says, I'm averaging over 178 calls directly via the internet uh, so far this year. So that's the process of building links, which is going to help you rank better in the search engines. And there are a couple questions here. I don't know if I'm going to have time to, to answer them all. Greg, I'll definitely get this to you 
Tim's got a good question. He says, how many inbound links should a company have? And this really should be driven by that competitive link acquisition strategy, figuring out, you know, if you're whatever market you're in, figuring out how many links your top competitor has that are relevant, because remember, relevance is key. Well, if they've got 279 real good inbound links, then you're probably going to need in the neighborhood of 279 similar quality links back to your website. So I hope that answers your question, but really it, it depends upon your market, how competitive it is, and a lot of different variables. So let's talk about social media, and feel free to pepper me with questions as we go. I'm trying to ask the, answer them in, in, in as concise of a manner as I can. Um, social media. So most plumbing and HVAC companies that I'm talking with, the business owners, saying, okay, I understand that there's a lot of people on Facebook and there's a lot of people on Twitter, but I do not get the correlation on how that's going to help me grow my business. I don't understand you know, how that would benefit me in any way whatsoever. So the way I like to address that question is, what's your number one source of business right now? Where does most of your actual revenue come from? And again, if I was in a live audience, I would have you, you know, scream out the answer and I would get a resounding repeated referral business. Almost all of our profitable business comes from repeat customers, right? And so that should be the lifeblood of any quality plumbing and HVAC business. So social media gives you the opportunity to take that repeat and referral business, inject it with steroids, and take it to a whole nother level. And the reason is the average Facebook user has 135 friends. They're checking into Facebook between three and five times per day. By getting them to press the like button, for instance, on your Facebook page, by virtue of them pressing that like button, they've given you exposure to 135 of the friends that they have on Facebook, typically right within your close geographic area. So it's almost as if they called all of their friends in the area and said, hey, I just had a great, you know, great experience with this plumbing or this HVAC company in our area. The next time you need a good plumber, you know, give them a call. That's a major opportunity within social media. The other big opportunity really is you've, they've given you the opportunity to remain top of mind with them. If they're checking in on Facebook between three and five times per day and they're going to see the things that you post because they liked you, well, as long as you're posting relevant, consistent updates on social media, they're going to see you. And they're going to see you a couple times a week and say, hey, wow, XYZ Plumbing or XYZ HVAC Company, man, they're... they're they're really active with this stuff and you're going to remain top of mind and that's how you can really harness the power of social media to get more repeat and referral business. So where should you be actively involved in social media? Well, I think you need to start with a Facebook page for your uh, plumbing or HVAC business. It's a consumer oriented social media profile. It's really the most active from a consumer perspective. So you want to have not a personal page but a business page for your bit for your plumbing or HVAC business on Facebook. I think you definitely still want to have a Twitter profile. There's there's some community of people that are active on Twitter. You want to be engaged in LinkedIn, YouTube, and YouTube you might not think of it as a social profile, but if you're posting relevant videos and you can start to develop a series of people that are following you on, on YouTube. So you want to have YouTube. You definitely want to have Google Plus and Google Plus is the new social media engine driven by Google, and it's also the real underlying platform now that drives your Google map listings. So you're going to have a Google Plus profile regardless. You should be posting to it on an ongoing basis. And you should have a blog. So you need to have a blog on your site so that when I'm talking about creating this fresh content on an ongoing basis, it goes to the blog. The other beautiful thing about the blog is you can have it set up so it automatically posts this content to your various social media profiles. So we can automatically post to Twitter and LinkedIn and Google+. So really, you want to have a strategy for social media that includes these major profiles. And then you need to figure out how you're going to get your real customers to press that like button, to press that subscribe button. And for me, this comes back to the whole email marketing thing. You want to be collecting the names and email addresses of your customers. You definitely want to be sending an email after service, thanking them for their business and asking them to write a review. 
But the next step really is to have an email that goes out and lets them know, hey, we're actively involved in social media. We'd love it if you press the like button. We'd love it if you press the subscribe button. Again, make it easy for them to do it. Offer them some type of incentive where possible, a discount on their next service, a you know something that gives them incentive to do that, to press that like button. And then you've got to be posting to them on an ongoing basis. So the the 80-20 rule kind of applies in social media. 20% of your posts, only 20% or less, should be promotional in nature. You know, here's a discount on your next plumbing service. Um, you know, the different things that are very promotional in nature. 80% of it really should be engagement and and information. So by information, I mean you know, here's what's going on with XYZ Plumbing. Here's a picture of our latest, you know, party. Here's a picture of a really crazy, you know, water heater explosion that we saw. Um, just interesting things like that. The engagement component of it is, as you start to develop these people that are pressing the like button, you want to engage with them. So they're posting things about their life, about what's going on with, within their world, and you should be listening to that. And even if it's just as simple as, hey, Billy just graduated from high school with, you know, straight A's, hey, you know, tell, tell Billy we say congratulations, you know, hope he has a wonderful college experience. Little things like that go a really long way because it shows that you're not just randomly, blindly posting, but you're really engaging with your consumers, which, again, all comes back to that notion of repeat and referral business. So, you know, just to recap, the real important six steps to getting active in, social, in, in, in your online marketing in 2013 is you understand now what the search engines are and the different components, the paid, the organic, and the map listings. You understand that you need to build out your website so you've got pages for your most profitable plumbing services, not just plumber and plumbing. Um, and you've got to make sure that you've built pages for those sub-cities that you operate in. You want to make sure that you've optimized the pages, title tags, H1 tags, image descriptions, etc. You want to optimize your Google map listing. Make sure that you've claimed it at google.com slash places, that you've got consistency with your name, address, and phone number, and you've got a process in place to get real reviews from your real customers in your true authentic service area. You want to get active with getting inbound links, and I showed you some very specific places where you could get links online, both by doing competitive link acquisition by you know really looking at the, the, the free opportunities that you have for yourself from the various organizations that you're involved in and then creating content and syndicating that content to build your authority and then get active in social media. Start setting up your social media profiles if they're not set up, customize them and then get active posting to those social media profiles on an ongoing basis. So if you guys have questions feel free to chime in and I just I want to ask you how many of you would like to have my team, me and my team, manage this process for you? Um, so just think about that. I want to show a video to you. Hi, my name is Michael Shamrock Pine. You know, a lot of companies rely on getting the word out there, making themselves known so that people will call and use their services. Over the last few years, while we've been in business, we've used like different companies to get us up on the web and do our web pages and basically get us on the search engines. And I've tried different companies, and some companies have worked and some companies haven't. I found a company right now that are doing basically all the stuff that, that I used to do and I used to want to get done on my website. A company called Plumbing SEO. Excuse me, Plumbers SEO. Um, I basically they built my website, they do all my search engine optimization, and they're basically there when I need them. They won't do anything unless uh, they run it past me first, uh, so I kind of have a hand in everything that's going on. When I started, um, my ranking in different uh, keywords was, it was pretty low, maybe in the sort of 15, 18, which puts me on the second and third page. And they basically said, you know what, let us go on it, let us do the, the website, we'll create pages and do everything we want to do, and let's see how we get on. Well, in the last two months, uh, I've gone from page three all the way up to page one, where I'm up on the map section and everything else. They've helped me with the videos. I will, I will basically make videos to help me post them, and I'm getting views in those videos, and everything's working. These guys are amazing. Give them a try. The one thing that I thought was great was before I started, they said, you know what, we'll work with you, but we'll also make a promise with you not to work with another competitor 
in your area, which is great. It means that I don't have to worry about, uh, you know, my competitor going up to the same guys and basically now I'm competing against more people in the same area. But these guys are outstanding. Give them a call. Um, I'll put a link at the... Uh, the so I'm going to be, I'm going to be around for, for questions here at the end. Um, but I just want to give you guys the opportunity for those of you that are interested um, in having our team implement this for you. Um, you know, one of the companies we work with in the Falls Church, Virginia area um, had been really active with the Yellow Book. They tried a couple different programs. Um, you know, Mike, like most people, unfortunately, didn't have the experience that they, that they wanted. Um, and then they gave us the opportunity to come in and implement our program. And this is what they said. They said, we've been working with Plumber SEO since the beginning of 2012. It's just this year. And, and have been very pleased with the service. Prior to working with them, we'd attempted the Yellow Book to run our internet marketing efforts with very little success. Josh and the Plumber SEO team came in with a proactive internet marketing strategy and revamped the website, SEO, map optimization, and social media. Since getting started with them, we've seen a significant improvement in our placement on the search engines and hold the top position for Falls Church Plumber, as well as a number of highly competitive plumbing keywords in our area. If you're looking to take your plumbing business to the next level online, I highly recommend Plumber SEO. So like Mark mentioned, uh, we only work with one plumber in each area. We do it because we feel it's a conflict of interest for us to you know, really do this for multiple people. Uh, so that's just the way we do business. Um, if, you're, if you're interested, if you think that you'd like to talk with us about having our team do this for you, uh, feel free to give me a call directly at the office at 866 610 Four six four seven, or you can go to plumberseo.net slash apply. Our, our program really is a combination of all the things I described on this webinar. Building out your website, whether you've got a good website or a bad website, we can either take over the existing site and optimize it for you. Uh, if you don't have a good website, we'll build something new for you. Make sure that we've got pages for each of the most important services. Make sure that we've got the title tags, the H1 tags, the on-page optimization squared away correctly. Um, then we'll get active with the, the Google Map listings, looking at the online NAP name, address, phone number, profile for you, making sure there's consistency on Google and Yahoo and Bing and City Search and Angie's List and Best of the Web, uh, setting up an automated review request process for you. I talked about the ability for your technicians to check in, give that information so it automatically syndicates back to the site, creating the fresh content and then automating the review request process because it runs on their mobile device, they press another button, an email goes to the customer thanking them for their business and asking them to write that review. Uh, and then we manage the, the content creation and link building process for you. Uh, we, we will be your ghostwriters. We'll come up with those four informative articles, we'll post them to the blog on your behalf, we'll get them syndicated so you get the inbound links, and then we'll manage that link building process. Looking at your competitors, figuring out what their link profile is, getting the same and similar links back to your website, and helping you outrank your competition. We also manage your social media profiles. So we can set up your Facebook and Twitter and Google Plus and LinkedIn if you don't have them. If you have them, we'll make sure that they're branded for your organization and then become your social media team. So we'll be the ones coming up with the topics, posting, getting feedback from you, posting that information, managing the entire process. So again, if this sounds like something that would be a fit for you, if you think it would be a benefit to have exclusive rights to these types of services in your area, you can call us at 866-610-4647, or uh, you can go to plumberseo.net slash apply. There you can just enter some details about your company. I'll quickly tell you whether or not uh, the, the, the territory is open, and we can discuss potentially working together. So I, I really... I really hope that you guys found value from this presentation. I hope that you're able to take these ideas and techniques and implement them in your business. Um, these are universally proven techniques, um, and, and they, they really do work well. So if you have questions, now's the time. And I do see some leftover questions here. I will try and address the ones that, that make sense in the public atmosphere here. Um, at the end, can you share how you came up with your plumbing keyword list? Can you direct me to where I can find similar HVAC keywords um, in, in, the, in that area of business? Yes. So the way we came up with this list is through a couple different tools. There's a tool called WordStream that we pay for. There's also Google AdWords keyword tool. You can just go to google.com slash AdWords. And as you type in keywords and you start to create a large scope, Google will actually generate a list for you that says, okay, 
this is the monthly search volume for all of these different keywords. And then you can sort that, and that's how we come up with the most commonly searched plumbing and HVAC related keywords. Um, I, I do have a list um, on, on both plumbing and HVAC, so I'll make sure that that list goes out to, to you, Greg, and to the others that are on the call today. Another question. Will the webinar be available for download or online at a later date? Absolutely. I will send, or actually I guess Charlie will send an email after the presentation with a, a recording of the presentation so you can hear it. Any, any additional questions that you guys have? You know, I, I, I appreciate the engagement. I appreciate you guys. Okay, okay, there's more. I didn't realize. I'm sorry. All right. Do you recommend using a review management service? And if so, which? Um, all right, so there are a number of review management tools out there that, that, are, that are good. Um, wow, well, the, the name of it is, is excuse me. The one we, we use and recommend is Nearby Now, and you can learn more at nearbynow.co slash plumber SEO. Uh, it's a tool that helps to automate the review request process like I talked about. Um, there are some other good ones out there. Um, I just they're, they're escaping me at the moment. Phyllis has a question. Do you have a phone number for Google? I can contact them via email. I've got nowhere fast. Thanks. Well, I don't have a number for Google. Google is, is very close to the vest with this type of thing. The only type of support you can get is if you're running a pay-per-click campaign. There is, however, a live online customer support portal where you can type in questions and actually get direct response based on your, your CID or the actual number associated with your Google Places listing. Uh, Phyllis, I will make sure that I get your contact information from, from Charlie, and I'll get that for you. Also, if, if you guys want to reach out to me directly just with simple questions or things that you want to make sure I follow up with you on, you can email me. It's josh at plumberseo.net. Just shoot me an email. Hey, don't forget to send me the uh, copy of the presentation, or hey, don't forget to send me that, that place where I can ask questions to Google directly, and I'll reply to that directly. Phyllis, thanks for your feedback. Phil says, I appreciated the webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you, Phyllis. I, I really appreciate it. Um, and if, you know, I still have over 20 people on the call. I appreciate you guys sticking through the, the presentation. I, like I said, I, I do this out of service. I hope you guys do get value from this. I hope you're able to implement it. I'm still on the call. I'm in no rush to go anywhere. So if you've got questions, feel free to put them on the questions bar. If you, you know, if you prefer to have it addressed in private, you can email me, josh at plumberseo.net. If you're interested in talking about the services, of course, you can go to you know, plumberseo.net slash apply or call us. Charlie, did you, did you want to add anything? Um, no, not necessarily. Um, I know we're going to try and schedule another one of these for February, I believe, Josh. Yeah, actually in February, so this, this webinar is part of a continuing QSC Internet Marketing Series. We talked, we had an hour-long presentation that was just on Google Maps optimization. We had an hour-long presentation that was just on uh, search engine optimization. And what I want to do on February, what we're going to do on February is, is pay-per-click management. So for those of you that run pay-per-click campaigns or have someone running pay-per-click campaigns for you, that session is going to be all about how to really effectively manage that pay-per-click campaign from keyword selection to ad groups to landing pages to offers uh, and really making sure that you get your highest quality score which is going to drive the lowest cost per click and the best return on investment. I see one other question here Josh the last one up is are you going to be at the QSC event in San Diego? Yes as a matter of fact I, I absolutely will be there and so I look forward to meeting you guys in San Diego those of you that uh, would like to like to network with me. Well Josh thank you very much I appreciate it I, I, I know we ran a little long but uh, I think those that hung with it they got a lot of value out of it and as I had mentioned, there were a couple of questions that uh, as long as the recording process worked well with uh, this webinar, I will be sending a link out tomorrow. Occasionally, uh, I do have issues, but uh, hopefully this one worked. 
and I uh, appreciate everybody being on and watch your watch uh, email, watch Facebook, watch uh, LinkedIn, wherever you saw the notice, and uh, we'll let you know about the next one. Josh, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.